Thank you, Debbie, Kay, and Matt, and good morning. Welcome to University Baptist Church on this Communion Sunday and second Sunday of Advent, December 6th, 2020. For anyone watching who doesn't know me, my name is David Tomasacci, and I'm the Director of Music here at University Baptist Church. At any time, you can pause and check out this video's description to see listed there today's worship order, leaders, and musicians. I'll also take this moment to invite each of you to sing along during all of our congregational music throughout the service, including our gathering hymn, the Advent hymn, One Candle is Lit, the Approaching God hymn, Doxology, When God is a Child, and of course, our traditional UBC Communion Sunday hymn, Blessed be the tie that binds. During this second week of Advent, we will be focusing on the topic of peace in our daily UBC Advent devotionals. If you haven't had a chance to already, I encourage you to go and check out today's devotional, written by Pat Rohrbaugh. My thanks to Julius, Joseph, Molly, Leslie, Frank, and Allison for their beautiful devotionals, both written and filmed, about hope last week. At the time of this writing, we still have a few more days to fill up. In other words, a few more days for which we could use some writers. Please consider lending your voice, devotion, and creativity to writing an Advent devotional on the topics of peace, joy, or love for our Advent devotional series. In our service today, you'll hear our tenor section leader, Jacob Pantelukas, accompanied by Molly Rausch on piano, singing the second verse of the hymns One Candle is Lit and When God is a Child, after the call to worship and candle lighting, and as postlude, respectively. Our message in music this morning is the iconic aria Every Valley from Handel's Oratorio Messiah, performed by Drew Whitlow, tenor. Drew is a colleague and friend of Sandy Charisse, our alto section leader. Drew is a choral conductor, director of music, and tenor in Savannah, Georgia, where he sings along with Sandy in the Servire Choir, a professional choir and service organization whose mission is service, charity, and volunteerism. In other words, to sing and serve. I'd like to especially thank Drew for recording this acrobatic and melismatic staple of Baroque sacred music. The words are an excerpt from our scripture reading for today, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 4. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill made low, the crooked straight and the rough places plain. And now I invite you all to come and share the Lord, to experience and share the peace of Christ, and to join us in worship. Peace be with you, and welcome to University Baptist Church. We gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through His loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take our bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. No one is a stranger here. Soon, where angels sing, 
I'm Ken Watkins. I'm the associate pastor at University Baptist Church, Columbus, Ohio. I want to add my welcome to that of others uh, on this second Sunday of Advent. Uh, I'm sitting at the, on the steps that lead up to the pulpit in the sanctuary of University Baptist Church. I, I'm sorry that you can't be here with me to enjoy the uh, numerous uh, nativity sets that have been that Carrie Taylor and, and Leslie Floyd have put out uh, and uh, uh, later in the week uh, maybe they will share some of these on video for those who would like to see them. As I sit beside this uh, set uh, made in Africa I'm I'm struck by uh, several things. One is my gratitude Gratitude for those who, who broke the, uh, the gospel out of its original container and uh, cultural container and took it to the world. I'm also struck with how, by uh, how, how rapidly uh, the gospel was grasped. Uh, the good news became good news for people from many, many cultures. And it, um, and and people in the different cultures uh, understood, saw that God was one who understood who they were and what was going on in their lives and their needs. So I look at this set. Uh, the people in this set are, are obviously African and the animals in the set are Af animal, African animals. And the and it reminds me that, that, that God is indeed universal. It also says to me that no matter where you are, uh, physically or spiritually, no matter where you are today, uh, that God, uh, God is coming to you. God wants to come to you and connect with you. God loves you. And my prayer for us in this time together is that we will taste, all of us will taste afresh that love and that we will, and that we will also be reminded that others love us too. So may God bless us in our time together today. Amen. Our lists are long, even in a strange mess where we live these days. And we want to do it right. We want to be safe but we want to be able to enjoy the season. We've got work to do to put right what has gone wrong, to heal what is broken, to mend the relationships, and to prepare for the company that will come. The prophet Isaiah reminded us that there is work to be done. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. When God comes in, then healing is to be found. But we need to make the way. We need to open the door into our lives. So we light these candles as a sign of our faith that the God we worship is not far from us and that we can clear the way for that God to come and dwell with us. We light these candles in faith that company is coming. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Now please join us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Hello, Bill, and I am glad to have this opportunity to spend a few moments with you on Zoom, because as I hope uh, members of our community know, uh, this is your last Sunday with us at University Baptist Church. Uh, Bill started with us February the 1st, and it wasn't long after that that the pandemic struck, of course, which radically altered uh, the nature of Bill's ministry with us, and unfortunately, uh, significantly reduced, radically reduced the amount of actual face-to-face -face time that we had with Bill. So um, I regret that, but at the same time, I appreciate Bill's willingness to hang in and work with us during these very unique and, uh, and challenging times. I'm sure that many different people have had uh, experience with and contact will, with Bill in many different contexts. Uh, for me, specifically, a lot of that has happened through the work of our pastor search and strategic planning committee. Bill has been at every single meeting that we have had, which is often weekly uh, during the course of a given month, and has been a very valuable resource and consultant to our process. And so I wanna personally thank Bill for uh, the assistance he has given us um, as, as a committee, as well as to thank Bill on behalf of the larger University Baptist uh, Church community. So at this point, let me stop and, and invite you, Bill, to say a few words as well. <clears throat> Orrin, I appreciate those kind words. And I do want to take just a moment to thank the UBC community for the opportunity to serve as your interim pastor during these past 10 months. It has, uh, it has been a real joy, and I do appreciate all the, the, the kindness and generosity that has been shared with me. As Oren indicated, this 10, 10 months or so that I've been with you has not unfolded like we anticipated that it would, not, not even close to that, just Six weeks after I, I began as interim, we had to stop meeting in person and also stop having in-person meetings be, because of the pandemic. But I do appreciate your, your flexibility and your resiliency and the, the way in which you have continued to support your church staff and me and also the mission and ministry of, of University Baptist Church. Again, it's been a, a real privilege to serve with you and I will be thinking about you and praying for you as you move into the future that God has for you. Well, thank you, Bill. We, we truly appreciate that. And um, I so wish that we were meeting in person and had the opportunity to, to shake your hand and and have a, a some sort of a reception, if you will, but such 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 is the times that we are in. Um, at this point, though, I, I would like to offer a word of prayer, a prayer of thanksgiving for the ministry that you have had here at UBC. So if you would join me in that word of prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for Bill and for his ministry at the University Baptist Church. We give you thanks that we've had this opportunity to work with him and to grow together uh, in the work that we do to try to find unique, innovative, and creative ways to, to extend our ministry into the future and into this community. We give you thanks that through this time, uh, we have been able to be uh, be able to use technology that's permitted us to continue to work even even in the midst of the challenges. Uh, we give you thanks, God, that we will have uh, memories of this work together and that these memories and the work that has already been done will empower and guide us in the uh, months and even years to come. God, we now ask that you would be with Bill wherever his call takes him into the future to whatever church he may serve in the future, to whatever shape his ministry may, may take in the future. 
We pray that you will grant him uh, safety in the midst of this time of infectious virus and that you will guide us so that the work we do will be a reflection of uh, the gifts that he has brought to this community. We lift this up to you, God, and we pray this in the name of the God in whom we live and move and have our being. Amen. Amen. Thank you again, Bill. Good morning, UBC. Today's scripture reading comes from Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arm rolls for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of God for the people of God. Exalted shall be exalted, shall be exalted, shall be exalted, and every and hill made low. The crock is straight, and the rough place is plain. The crock is straight, the crock is straight, and the rough place is plain. And the rock lays his name. Every valley, every valley shall be exalted. Exalted, and every mountain and hill made low. The crock is straight. The crock is straight. The crock is straight, and the rough place is plain. And the rough place is plain. And the rough place is plain. The 
for this time of worship. I add my welcome to other welcomes that have been given during this video service of worship. I am so glad that you have joined us for this time of worship. My name is Pastor Bill Tatum, and I am interim pastor at University Baptist Church. And here on this second Sunday of Advent, we focus on peace. That is our theme for the week. Uh, last weekend, we focused on hope, and today we focus on peace. So, after a word of prayer, I will share with you a message from Scripture that holds before us the possibility of peace. Please bow with me for prayer. O oh, kind and gracious God, we do thank you for the privilege of being able to share this time. And God, we pray that you will touch and bless us as we reflect on this second Sunday of Advent on the theme of peace. We ask your blessing. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Men and women have been searching for peace of mind and peace of spirit throughout human history. Feeling troubled or tense? Searching for peace of mind? If so, I, I suspect that you are not alone. And especially in these difficult days that we are experiencing, uh, many of us are, are searching for some way of peace and contentment. And we have many suggestions about how that might be achieved. Any number of books, magazines, and internet sites are eager to offer us the key to peace. There are many approaches to achieving peace. Sometime back, I read about an approach to peace that comes in the form of a, a beverage. The recipe is to take one half cup of pineapple juice or crushed pineapple, two tablespoons of safflower oil, one teaspoon vanilla, two cups of milk, one cup powdered skim milk, and one half teaspoon of yeast liver mix. Put it all in a blender, mix, chill, and serve. The creators of this drink promise that if we start each day with one, we will have peace and calm that is otherwise unavailable. Well, we, we chuckle at that kind of claim, don't we? We, we realize that, that peace and joy do not come in a beverage, but even so, even so, we understand the desire to have peace and contentment in life. And we also understand the desire to be able to do simple something simple that will bring that about. So friends, we, we recognize that peace is difficult to come by. We know that the world is not at peace. And we know that the same can be said in our, about our local communities and, and even our families and, and sometimes in churches there is not peace. Peace of mind to some and peace of spirit is to some a, a dream that cannot be, be realized. 
But here we are, friends, on the second Sunday of Advent. And this is a day that, that traditionally has focused on peace. And as we worship on the second Sunday of Advent, we have faith that God does provide peace. That as we prepare ourselves spiritually for the coming of Christ at Christmas, we are confident that God provides a way to peace. So part of our preparation for the coming of Christ at Christmas is to focus this day on peace. And we do so today by turning to Isaiah chapter 40. Now, in Isaiah 40, there is no word that we can find in our reading that can be translated by the English word peace. But the very last sentence in Isaiah chapter 39 does speak of peace. It tells us that there will be peace. So that, uh, that passage of Scripture uh, reveals confidence that God will, in fact, bring peace. So in a sense, Isaiah chapter 40 describes for us the peace that God can bring. So this morning, let's reflect on Isaiah chapter 40. Perhaps the first thing we notice about Isaiah 40 are the images. These images are vivid, bold, and powerful. Here are just a few of the images that, that, that we see in I, Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah speaks of the wilderness. He speaks of, of humanity as grass. And he speaks of God as shepherd. And these are strong. They are powerful images. But we might wonder what these images have to do with us. Well, the key, I think, is to be found in the opening words of our Bible reading. There, Isaiah says to us, comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. So these are words that, that Isaiah is sharing with the people that he, he first wrote and spoke to. And these are words that he, he shares with us. And these are words that come to him from God. Comfort, comfort my people, says, you God, says your God. And these words set the tone for Isaiah 40. The word from God is a word of comfort. And that was a word that was very much needed by the people of Isaiah's time, and it is a word that is very much needed by us as well. In these difficult days that we experience, we indeed do need a word of comfort. It is a word that we need today. In our passage of Scripture, Isaiah speaks of the hard service that the people have endured. And who among us does not feel that we have been enduring hard service in recent months? And so, we need this promise of comfort just as much as the people in Isaiah's time. We need these words of comfort. What a powerful source of assurance to know that God comforts us. God comforts us during our time of need. But that word comfort, it's kind of vague, isn't it? It could mean a, a great variety of things. What does it really mean to be comforted? Well, our passage of Scripture teaches us that, 
the sense in which it's being met here, at least one of the senses, is that God comforts us by being present with us. Here is what Isaiah, or rather what God instructs Isaiah to say. You who bring good news, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid to say, here is your God. So God is telling Isaiah to share with his people and with us as well this idea that God is present with us. No matter what kind of trouble we go through, no matter what kind of difficulty we are experiencing, God walks with us. God is walking alongside us. As Isaiah will say later, God is our shepherd. So we are comforted, and we can receive peace from this idea that God walks with us. I came across this story a while back. It's told about a, a little girl who came home from her neighbor's house. The woman who lived in the neighboring house had just lost someone very close to her to death. And so as she came in, her father asked, asked her, where did you go? She explained that she had been to the neighbor's house, and, she, and her father said, well, why did you go there? And the little girl said, to comfort Mrs. Johnston. And then her father asked her, almost amused, what could you do to comfort her? And the daughter answered, I climbed into her lap and I cried with her. See, that child was present with her, her neighbor who was going through something that was very difficult. And isn't that what God is like? God is with us. God walks with us through these difficult times. And we can be comforted by that reality. We can have a sense of peace about it. But the truth is that God does more than just be present with us. Now that, that's nothing uh, to, uh, to, to just... Um, shug off this, this reality that God is with us. That's not a small thing. That's something that's very important when we're, when we're going through tough times, this reality that God is with us. That is a lot. But God not only is with us, God does something. In our passage of Scripture, God instructs Isaiah to say, Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed. And at the end of the reading, as, as I shared a few moments ago, we are told that God will feed the flock like a shepherd. God will gather the lambs in God's arms and carry them in God's bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. You see, God is not only with us, but God does something. God, in fact, changes our circumstances. And that is what we look forward to at during this Advent season, isn't it? It's what we look forward to. We look forward to the coming of Christ who changes all things. And so, as we consider this passage of Scripture, it shares with us that, that God speaks a word of comfort. God instructs Isaiah to say to the people of his time and to us that we can be comforted because God is with us. And as God is with us, God changes things by giving us a sense of peace. We hear the word of comfort from the Bible, and in fact, we are comforted. 
And friends, I hope that as we have shared together this morning, that you indeed have a sense of comfort, knowing that whatever we're going through, God is with us. God is loving us and caring for us. And God can bring to us the gift of peace. One of the songs that we sing during this season, and there are several that, that speak to us about the way that God brings peace during the Advent and Christmas season. One of the songs that we sing is, Let There Be Peace on Earth. What a powerful message. For God is ready and willing to bring peace to us if we will open ourselves to it. And we hear the words of the Apostle Paul. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Friends, my hope and prayer is that God will bring to you the gift of peace during this Advent season. Please bow with me in prayer. O oh, kind and gracious God, we do thank you for the privilege of being able to share this time together and to focus on this passage of Scripture. God, you offer us the gift of comfort, and you want to comfort us. Comfort us. Oh God, we pray that we would receive that gift and that during these difficult times that we experience, that we would receive your gift of comfort and peace. We offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. you to please join us for the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Holy Creator, we come to you today with both joys and concerns in our hearts. Many of us are excited over the beginning of Advent and the hope, love, and joy it represents. We are thankful for news of new vaccines and other medications to help with the current pandemic we are enduring. And we are looking forward to the upcoming new year and the potential it represents. Lord, we also come to you with challenges over realizing all those who continue to suffer and pass away from the pandemic. We continue our prayers for members of our own congregation, including Bob, Frank, and Isaac, as they continue to navigate the challenging road to recovery. And we also pray for our community, our state, our country, and the world as we all continue to find our way through unpredictable and sometimes very difficult times. We love you, God, and trust you will show us the way to a better future. Finally, we pray for our interim pastor, Bill Tatum, who for the past few months has guided and supported our church as we explore new ways to spread the grace and mercy of Christ throughout the world. Please keep him safe and well cared for through your love. 
For these and all things we pray in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. As we enter the offertory portion of the, of the service, uh, I'm reminded of God's great generosity as I look around the sanctuary here, as I look at this Christmas tree. Christmas is a time that highlights generosity, uh, God's generosity to us, uh, our generosity to others, our generosity back to God. It's a, it's a generous time. When I look at the, all the different symbols of Christmas, I'm reminded uh, of, of a Christmas carol. Uh, Charles Dickens' um, story that I, that I try to watch some version of each year. And in the Christmas carol, there's this, this tension, this tension between greed and bitterness and generosity and, and, caring, and a caring spirit. And in, as you know, and this is no spoiler, um, in the end, love wins out. The offertory time in our service is a time when we are invited uh, to give and to, ref and to reflect as we give. We are invited to give from our resources to support God's ministry through this church, the kingdom's work. Uh, we are invited to give of, our, of our, ourselves, our spiritual gifts, our presence, our care. And if you are, feel called to, to give to University Baptist Church, uh, there are several ways for you to do that. One is to send a, you can send a check to UBC 50 West Lane Avenue, Columbus, Ohio, 43201. Uh, we check the mail daily and um, a second way would be to to drop by. Uh, Carrie is uh, is in the office on uh, Tuesdays through Friday, uh, around eight to noon. Uh, you she can buzz you in and allow you to come in, and you can keep your social distance and wear your mask, and um, uh, and she will uh, and you can if you have an offering to bring to her. Or you can go online to ubccolumbus.org and, um, and scroll through and do you see the place for donation. But I, like all of us, on this, as we move through this Advent season, I anticipate encounters with Christ but I also wonder at what God is calling me to do and to give. Let us pray our a prayer of blessing. Oh God, we thank you for your gifts to us, your presence, your, your care, your touch on our lives, the community that you've given us. We offer ourselves afresh to you. Take our lives and use them. Bless gifts that we bring and give to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Today is the first Sunday of the month, and on this first Sunday of the month at University Baptist Church, we share in, in Holy Communion. Um, I use, when we do communion, I, I use a variety of liturgies. Uh, some are simple, some are more complex. Uh, today's liturgy is a, is a great thanksgiving, which is a, basically just a, is a prayer, and it connects uh, communion with the season, Advent. At the University of Adventist Church, we believe that the, the table belongs to God. And on God's behalf, we, we invite all, who, all to, to partake of, 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 of communion. Now, if you want to pause your video at this point to, to get bread or, and juice, uh, you may do that. And then, and then come back and start your, start your video again. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations you scattered the proud in the in the imagination of their hearts and have have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things and the rich you send away send empty away. Your son your your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to our church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made, up, made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, and he gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on, on us gathered here and scattered about, and on these gifts of, of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, 
with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all, on, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Helen, this is the body of Christ. Amen. Ken, this is the body of Christ. Amen. Helen, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Ken, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. My prayer is that you are sharing this time with us and that you will share this with any who are around you and who, who are meeting with you. If we were in normal times, uh, we would uh, we would make a circle around the room and hold hands and we would sing, blessed be the tie that binds. And before we sang, blessed be the tie that binds, I would invite you to look into the eyes of those in the room with you and give them and give them a silent blessing. And as and since we are not together, uh, I invite you to bless those around you in your in your house or wherever you're taking this communion. I also I also invite you to imagine others from your from the University of Adventist Church congregation that that uh, you might normally see on a Sunday. And if you're not a part of University Baptist, if you've not attended University Baptist, uh, to, to to think of others that are in your life, others that may attend your church, or other churches that you've been a part of, or family members, and in this moment, uh, give them blessing, silent blessing. Well, God, thank you for the gifts that you give us. We thank you for the bread and the wine that connects us with you. We thank you that you want to be in, intimately involved in our lives and a part of us. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that of received a blessing from this service of worship. Before we pronounce the, the prayer of benediction, I do want to just take a moment to express my appreciation for all of the kindness that has been shared with me. And uh, as you know, that was, um, there was a segment earlier in the service about it, that this is my last Sunday participating in the online worship of University Baptist Church. I appreciate, appreciate so much the, the work of the, the staff. It's been a real privilege to have had the opportunity to serve with them, with, with David and, and Ken and Carrie, and also a special appreciation for Ari for her, her work in making these these uh, virtual services possible. She has uh, 
has done a wonderful job, and I, I appreciate her efforts so much. And again, I, I just want to, to express my appreciation to each one of you for, for your flexibility and, and kindness as, as we have served together in these very unusual days. I pray God's blessing for you, and I, I pray that, that as God leads you into the future that God has for you, that you would have a real sense of, of joy in serving God. So I will be, uh, be thinking and praying for you as you move into God's future. Please bow with me for prayer. Oh, good and gracious God, we do thank you for the privilege of being able to worship together. And we pray, Lord, that, that as we live the days that we are currently experiencing, that you would take, keep us safe and well, and that you would help us to all live out our calling. In Christ's name, we offer this prayer. Amen. Thank you.